Hello everyone, my name is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric at precision-elect.com, your automation service center. Drives, motors, controls, we've done it for over 30 years. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Today's video, we're gonna be covering the next episode of the SVX 9000 series variable frequency drive. We're actually going to be commissioning it in this video and running it straight off of the keypad. We're not wiring anything to the terminal strip just yet, but uh, we at least get a motor running and that's kind of fun, right? On a different note, we do repair these drives, quite a few of them. So if you do have an SVX 9000 in your facility and it's in need of repair, anything ranging from the smaller to the extremely large, uh, we've repaired them all. So feel free to give us a call. So let's get this thing started. So once you power up your SVX 9000, you will be greeted for the first time with the startup wizard. And it tells me to press enter, so I'm going to press enter. For my language, I'm going to choose English. I was not able to learn another language. Application basic. Now this is essentially what's in your application manual in your application macro settings. So let me go ahead and pull up that application manual. The essential basic application is as follows. Essentially it's got this parameter list with these default parameters that'll be changed. On the left hand side of that page in your application manual, you're gonna see all the wiring associated with that macro. Now we're not wiring anything just yet, but later on we're gonna reference this when we actually do our wiring. So for starters, we're just gonna start with basic and press enter. And it says setup starts, press enter. Now I get to choose my minimum frequency. That's my minimum speed of my motor. If I wanted to say, for example, never run lower than 30 hertz, I could set that here. But in my application, I'm gonna leave it at zero so that I can actually stop the motor if I want to. For maximum frequency, I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to 60 hertz because that's actually the rated frequency on my motor's nameplate. So I'm gonna press enter for that one. For my acceleration time, the default is three seconds, which can be pretty aggressive for some applications. Obviously, I don't have my motor connected to a load, so three seconds is more than adequate. I could probably even do it faster. But for some people, if you're not sure how much of a load or how aggressive your load is, you can start this at a default 20 seconds or even 60 seconds just to see how your load responds. And you can always go in and change it later. So I'm gonna press enter on three seconds for Axel, and then decel time comes up. That's how, how long it takes for it to decelerate down to a lower speed. I'm gonna leave mine at three seconds. The same rule applies here. You can do 20 seconds or 60 seconds just to try it out and extend it even further if you want. Next is my current limit. Current limit is basically going to be on your motor's nameplate, and you're gonna take your motor's nameplate and you're gonna multiply it by one and a half. So for example, my motor is rated for two amps, but I want my current limit to be 150% of that. So that's actually going to be, if I do the math in my head, I believe it is, yes it is, three amps. So I'm gonna hold the up arrow key until I get to three amps, and I'm gonna press enter. My motor's nameplate voltage, I'm gonna set at 230 volts. Again, that's what's on my nameplate. My motor's nameplate frequency, same. It's gonna be 60 hertz. Again, that's on my nameplate. Motor's nameplate speed, 1720 RPM. That is also correct. I'm gonna press enter again. And now here's my motor nameplate current. This is where I'm actually gonna set my motor's current. So again, this is different than your overload. This is so the drive knows both your motor's current and your overload setting. Press enter again. Now I'm getting a warning that says input phase supervision. Now this is because if you watch my previous video, I'm actually running this drive on single phase input for this demo. When you have three phase coming in, you're not gonna get this warning. I can actually turn that off later if I wish. Finally, it's asking me if I wanna repeat my setup. I'm gonna say no and setup is done. Press enter. So now that we've set it up, let's go ahead and start it. Okay, so now that we have it set up, essentially I press the start button and it's going to attempt to speed up at my rated speed that I've set with my keypad. Now, if I wanna change my speed, I can actually use these up and down arrow keys to change my speed, assuming I'm in the right menu, but right now I'm not in the right menu. I actually have to use these left and right arrow keys first to get to my output frequency. Right now it's set to 44.4 hertz. So if I press the down key, it'll switch, switch to keypad reference, and you'll notice the numbers start to go down. 
If I hold it down, it goes down a lot faster than if I just press it one at a time. If I press it one at a time, it just does it in tenths, which is pretty slow, it'll take a while. That's more for dialing in a speed. But as you can see, my motor is running slower and I can hold the up arrow key as well. And we can go all the way up to 60 Hertz. So let's see it run full speed. There we go. So that's all there is to this video. As always, if you have any questions or if you need an eat and drive repair, don't hesitate to give us a call. And uh, swing by our website, precision-elect.com, your industrial automation service center, drives, motors, controls. Just give us a call, we'll get you taken care of. Have a good day.